<sighs> oh my god. This is going to be a PSA for all you consultants and go-getters. I want you to hear this. I know people like that out there right now. You guys need to still listen to me, okay? There is something that has been bugging me for the longest time and it's really about boundaries. So I'm not talking about boundaries in terms of like, ooh, blurry lines or ooh, harassment or anything like that. I'm talking about work-life balance. In consulting, especially a lot of places that talk about how consulting is tough and consulting has long hours and a lot of weird hours. To a certain extent, that's true. You're going to have long hours, maybe on flights. You're going to have weird hours because of time zones. And it's going to be tough because of the type of work. But you need to set boundaries. I know too, too, too many consultants that I'm just like, why? <laughs> so the, this is, let me, let me wind back, okay? So this had, I had a conversation with a friend of mine who actually was at Accenture. He started a month before me and we both went to the same school. And I asked him, what do you think about Accenture? What do you think about consulting? What do you think about work? I'm like, oh my God, it sucks. I have such long hours. Then I asked him what he's doing. And there's like two things that I've noticed is number one, he couldn't say no. <laughs> you need to learn how to say no. You need to set boundaries. That's my second thing is that if you keep saying yes, because it's usually from two things, maybe three, is that you're anxious and you feel like you have something to prove. And then number two is that you just don't know how to say no. A lot of people don't know how to do that. Number three is that against authority, you just don't know how to do it. But when it comes to consulting, a lot of people just think it's like long hours and like you have to work 80 hours a week. You really don't have to, okay? I actually spoke to some people that are in consulting. They stop at 40 hours. In fact, it's encouraged to stop at 40 hours. They're not expecting you to ghost hours. There's that horrible stigma where you need to keep working even though you're not being documented for those hours. They're calling ghosting hours where you're basically saying you work 40 hours when you really worked 80 hours, but you just don't report those 40 hours. When it comes to consulting, it's actually going to be more focused on forecast and actuals. So a lot of times people just go at the forecast and they just keep going, but they just go see other hours. And sometimes when it comes to analysts, they get like a hourly rate, which by the way is like, you're not necessarily hourly. You're like basically salaried because you're working the 40 hours. It's just a matter of like how you distribute your hours, but you get paid overtime. That's just how it is. But then once you go higher than that, you're getting paid salaried. So for those particular situations, your dollar per hour is going to be dwindling the more hours you work. And one thing that most people forget about is that working longer hours does not always mean the best, <laughs> which is pretty obvious to a lot of people, but you'd be surprised that people are like, no, you always got to be hustling. I'm going to be slacking if I don't do it because everyone else on the team is working 80 hours a week. So really think about it. You need to actually put your foot down. Here's two situations, two real situations. One is, I had a coworker that kept on traveling all the time and also kept working all the time and just did not have much time to be with family. His wife threatened to leave him. You need to set boundaries. <laughs> it's totally doable. There's also a lot of situations that people literally say, oh, I'm gonna be leaving at 3 p.m. I need to go pick up my kid from school. That is possible, okay? People are people. You're fine with doing whatever you wanna do. You just need to make sure your work is done. That's all we expect. And also make sure you make your calls. That's all it really is. Whenever it comes to deadlines, of course you gotta hustle, but also be smart with your time. Do your stuff earlier so you'll be done earlier. Don't have to procrastinate all the time. If you keep burning out and you just keep on working on one little thing, you need to be smart with your time. When I'm talking about smart with your time, if you're working on an Excel sheet for like three days and it's really supposed to be one day, you can say to your team, it's taking you longer than usual. So you have to actually tell people so you get the help you need. It's okay to ask for help, okay? A lot of people forget about that because they feel like they have to be a soldier. They have to keep working on it all alone and just live with it. That's what they think they have to do. In consulting, it's not always about that. It's about teamwork. It's about leveraging everyone on your team and really try to have a healthy lifestyle. So a lot of people, they, they forget about that. And then there's also another group of people that they just, they're not slackers, but they just know their boundaries. They just know, 
Okay, eight to five, I'm done. Anything else, we leave for the next day or just say I can't do it. So a lot of people, they do appreciate that. I think it's a culture shift in my opinion. A lot of teams I work in, they are really great with this because they just know you have obligations. You are a human being. You're not just a worker horse all the time. It's not all the things you do. Anything like that where you have to like maybe leave at 3 p.m. to pick up your child. Maybe you could say something and I've totally said this before at an office where I'm trying to beat rush hour. I go back home. So that's like one hour or so that I actually would not necessarily be on the computer or working. That also works too. Another thing is that you want to make sure you stop working when you stop. My boyfriend struggles with this. He struggles in the fact that after 5 or 6 or 7 p.m., he's still working. He's technically closed his computer, but he's still on his phone. Oh my god, when I'm talking about vacations, oh my god. On vacations, he brings his phone and he responds to them on emails and chats and pings and all that kind of... He still responds to them. Why do you do that? This is exactly why burnout exists. You need to really shut down everything. It's okay, the world will not end because of you. You have a team, that's the whole point of the team is that you're also working together to make sure this works. So just make sure that next time, if you are trying to go on PTO or take time off, make sure you have someone that's ready, do some knowledge transfer with them. That way they don't need to bother you. So it's kind of be smart about your time. Make sure you're covered as well. So that way they're not gonna be messaging in the middle of nowhere. If you really think you have a specialized skill that only you can do it, it's really hard to teach, just don't do it. <laughs> they can wait for you. Like they can't possibly expect that from you. Especially when it comes to like upper heads out there, they're also gonna be working all the time. They have calls all the time. They're working in all time zones but they still have time to wind down. There's still always that. A lot of people, if you think about it, I would set your boundaries for times when you actually want good work-life balance and who doesn't like good work-life balance. But if you are trying to meet a deadline and you have to for like a period of time, do it. You just have to do it sometimes and it's cyclical. So, but if you're seeing that it's every day, every week, every month, every year, there's something you need to do. You need to be smarter with your time. You need to start delegating. You need to start telling people you just can't do it. A lot of times they just don't know that you're overutilized. Only you know. So you have to tell them. It's okay. It's okay. All right. So that's something you really need to get to know. Um, it's really hard to say no, especially if you're like a young consultant or you're a seasoned consultant. You feel like there's harsh expectations on you. You really need to pay attention to that and listen to your body, listen to yourself, and just say what's good for you. Set boundaries. And I'm actually gonna show you a post that I made in Subtle Asian Networking just to see what people thought. And these are the results. Impressive, like what? <laughs> That's so many votes. So they're also agreeing that you have to set boundaries too. So don't think that it's all on you to do all the work you're, you're not, you have a team and you're not the only person that has to do it. There's so many movies out there about workaholics that can't live a life or even have a romantic life. So just, you don't wanna be like that. You wanna have a life outside of work. Even if you don't have a life outside of work and you just like it, you still need some time to kind of tone everything off, you know, and just relax. So next time you have that little demon on your shoulder saying, you need to work, you need to keep doing this. Think to yourself, is it really worth it? do I really like what I'm doing? If you like what you're doing, perfect. That's great. But when it comes to the actual work itself, make sure you actually want to do it and make sure you personally can handle it. A lot of people, they can't handle it and they think that they can do it. So that's like the bad combination. So make sure to learn how to say no, set boundaries. It's okay. <laughs> the world will not end because of you. Thank you. That's all I want to say. This is like a rant. This, yeah, this is the most ranty video I've ever had, but oh my God, please stop glorializing the hustle life. Take time off. It's okay. <laughs> All right. With that said, thank you so much and see you guys next time. Bye. Also just got a new foster cat, Light Fury. I actually got adopted. So now I have a new foster cat named Charlotte. She's very cute. She's actually found on the streets in Delaware. So she's actually a feral, <laughs> but she's actually very playful. She knows how to use ball. She knows how to play with balls, how to fake with, how to play with fake mice. And she likes sticks. She also likes string and really likes tunnels. Definitely check me on Instagram. If you want to see a lot of Instagram stories and highlights on her, but she's very cute. Green eyes, this is gray, and then she's like also white. 
She's got a little goatee if you want to see how like her chin is basically gray. Very cute. She's definitely a shy one, but very playful, so. Too cute.